Hey, Yoda, look at this. Darwin wrote that human beings used to have pointy ears. You've got pointy ears. And he writes that today you can see the remnants of these pointy ears and some people, they got a little bump right there. You know, the more I think about it, the more you seem like a human being to me. I mean, look at you. You even are wearing human clothes. Hello, Yoda. Good day, Earthlings. We're trying to figure out what type of critters aliens like Yoda are. Now, here's another alien, his E.T. And you can see, I have arms, it has arms. I have legs, it has legs. I have mammary glands, it has mammary glands. So, it's a lot like me. Some aliens look like this. They are bald and they have gigantic heads and they kind of have very small noses and kind of don't have as much hair as the rest of us. So, we'd like to know, where do these aliens fit in the tree of life? Aliens, what kind of life are? So let's look at a tree of life. Here is one. Now, we have archaea over here and bacteria over there, and eukaryotes down in the bottom in green. All of these are names of species that exist today, but they're all microscopic. We need some type of microscope to look at them. They're single-celled, except for a small group right here in green. And we're going to look more carefully at that group in green. So let's blow them up and say, there they are. And let's illustrate them with some pictures. So plant, corn, is Zia, and it represents all plants. Homo is Charles Darwin representing all animals. And Caprinus is a mushroom representing all fungi. Now let's back up a little bit and see how long did it take to go from the tip of the red arrow to the tip of the blue arrow. It seems that that's about a billion years of animal evolution. A lot can happen in a billion years, so let's take a look at the phylogenetic tree of life during that billion years. So here we have humans up on the upper right and a relative, a kangaroo, uh, with a common ancestor 160 million years ago. And we humans and kangaroos have a common ancestor with monotremes, example echidna, about 180 million years ago, etc., etc. And so on this tree is a billion years of animal evolution. And we'd like to know, if we were to put Yoda on this tree, where would we put him? Now, animals eat other life forms. We're called heterotrophs. And Yoda, you can see, has a jaw there with lips, and presumably he stuffs things into his mouth, and so he too would be a heterotroph. So that's good, we're on the right track. We animals also move. We move around a lot. And our closest relatives have heads. Yoda obviously has a head, and I think he moves occasionally. So he is closely related to us. Here are some other alien uh, animals. We have a reptilian alien on the left and an amphibian alien on the right. Some aliens have giant heads, and they don't even cover them with skulls. I don't know what they do in the, when it hails. How do they protect all that brain power? Uh, but these are some aliens, and they all look like animals. So when we produce aliens in outer space, we're really making animals in outer space. But not only animals, a particular type of animal called a vertebrate. These aliens have vertebral columns. I guarantee you, you can even see that in E.T. a little bit. But not just any vertebrate, it's also mammals. These are mammals, you can tell by the mammary glands on the on two of those guys there. And not just any mammal, they're also primates. And not just any primates, they look like kind of monkeys or apes. And here's a tree of monkeys and apes. On the old world monkeys on the right, baboons and macaques. And then on the left, we have gorillas, chimps, bonobos, and human beings, and orangutans and gibbons. These are the apes. So you can see that those aliens on the left and the apes and monkeys on the right resemble each other. But let's look a little bit more closely at our closest relative. And there she is and he is. This, this is Jane Goodall, a human being, with a wonderful picture sitting next to a chimpanzee, our closest relative. So let's, when you compare Jane's face and the chimp's face with these other faces, it's kind of like most aliens, 
look like they're more closely related to humans than chimpanzees are. Now that's kind of a weird statement. These aliens look like they're more closely related to us than our closest relative on Earth. It's almost as if we invented these aliens to look and act and talk like we do. It's almost as if they are us. So Yoda, you and your alien friends seem to be more closely related to humans than even chimpanzees are. So either you're human or we've made you in our image. What do you think? Hmm. Hmm.